Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this quick video demonstration, I'm going to show you the exact steps how to connect a Raspberry Pi Pico or the brand new Raspberry Pi Pico 2 to your local area network and eventually the internet using a cable. I'm a bit tired of using a breadboard for prototyping, so to make things a little bit more interesting for this video, I designed a printed circuit board in the free and open source software KiCad, exported the Gerber files and uploaded them to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They were kind enough to make prototypes for me, and as you can see, I'm unboxing 5 prototypes right now. These are 2 layer printed circuit boards with green solder mask and white silk screen. If you're looking for someone to help you with printed circuit board manufacturing, 3D printing or metal sheet fabrication, visit the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They are also offering assembly services. This means that PCBWay.com could be a one-stop shop for your next prototype. PCBWay.com is well known in the makers community. This year, in 2024, they are celebrating their 10th anniversary. Raspberry Pi Pico was released on the market a few years ago and last week Raspberry Pi released another development board with the same form factor, the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. It comes with a better and faster microcontroller called RP2350. Unfortunately, I still don't have it, so this demonstration is going to be with Raspberry Pi Pico 1 and the RP2040 microcontroller. I have to say that Raspberry Pi Pico is a groundbreaking development board. It is the killer of old school development boards such as Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano and Arduino Leonardo. If you're starting a new project today, definitely consider to use Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico 2. Uh, it's faster, it's cheaper and it's amazing. Of course, there are some disadvantages. One of these disadvantages of Raspberry Pi Pico is the connectivity. Because of this, Raspberry Pi also released the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which comes with a chip for wireless connectivity. However, in this video, we're gonna connect it to the network uh, using a cable, a LAN cable. To achieve this goal, I purchased WIS 850 IO network module, which I'm going to connect over SPI to the Raspberry Pi Pico. It includes a W5500 chip, a transformer and RJ45 jack for plugging the network cable. The major advantage is the tiny size, there are also 12 pins, six on each side. Let's have a closer look at the core component, the W5500 Ethernet integrated circuit by WizNet. It supports speeds up to 100 megabits per second. This chip is provided in LQFP package for surface mount technology assembly. A few months ago, I visited Cambridge for Pi Wars 2024. This is a non-destructive robot competition and all robots are built around Raspberry Pi single board computers or Raspberry Pi Pico. There, a friend who was judging at the competition gave me the idea for a board like this one, a screw terminal board for Raspberry Pi Pico which allows the option uh, to do prototyping without a breadboard and to have a very solid connection uh, of the cables. So I've designed it with KiCad thanks to PCBWay for creating the prototypes for me and I can use it in this video. As you have seen at the beginning of the video, I received 5 printed circuit boards as prototypes. There are no components on them, so I have to do a little bit of soldering. This is just through hole soldering, there are a lot of pins, but it's straightforward. Before recording this video, I had already soldered male header pins to my Raspberry Pi Pico, so now I'm soldering female header pins uh, to the prototype board that I have, and also all the screw terminals. I have already mentioned on several occasions that this is an open source hardware printed circuit board that I designed with the free and open source software KiCad. Uh, this software runs on Microsoft uh, Windows, on Mac OS and on Linux distributions. As a Linux user, I'm using it on Ubuntu. On the back of the board, I put the following label. Open source hardware gives people the freedom to control their technology. 
And speaking about open source hardware, you can see Anavi Fume Extractor, which is another open source hardware gadget that I've designed. The purpose of this gadget is to extract the dangerous fumes and to keep them out of my face while I'm soldering. One more thing about my prototype PCB, it also has a reset button for the Raspberry Pi Pico. In order to have the Raspberry Pi Pico working with WIS 850IO, we need to connect them. The network module WIS 850IO supports the high-speed SPI interface. It operates at 3.3 volts, therefore we need 6 wires to connect it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. One for ground, one for 3.3 volts, this way we're gonna power the module, and the other four wires are for the SPI interface. Of course, honestly, I have to tell you that you can connect this module directly using female to female jumper wires to the Raspberry Pi Pico, but as I said at the beginning of the video, it's gonna be more interesting if we do it with our own printed circuit board. Therefore, I'm gonna use the terminal P board that I've designed and soldered in the previous step in the video for this demonstration. I'm using a screwdriver to fasten tightly all the jumper wires and I'm using female to male jumper wires uh, for attaching the WIS 850 IO module to the Anavi Terminal P printed circuit board. The last step of the wiring is obvious, I have to plug the Raspberry Pi Pico on the Anavi Terminal P board. We're ready with the hardware, but we still need software, therefore I developed an Arduino sketch. Launch Arduino IDE, go to File Preferences and make sure that the URL for Raspberry Pi Pico and the rest of the RP2040 boards is added to the additional board manager URLs. After that, go to the board manager and make sure that the Raspberry Pi Pico is installed in Arduino IDE. Make sure that the Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to your computer. After that, in tools from Arduino IDE, select Raspberry Pi Pico as a board and the appropriate port. The Arduino-Ethernet.ino sketch that I've developed is available with GitHub. I've shared a link in the description of the video. It relies on two popular Arduino libraries, SPI and Ethernet. In Arduino IDE, click the upload button to compile and upload this Arduino sketch to your Raspberry Pi Pico. Once the sketch is uploaded to your Raspberry Pi Pico, observe the output in the serial monitor to make sure that it's working correctly. I'm done with the hardware, I have the software ready in terms of the Arduino sketch, so now let's combine these two things together in a quick cool demonstration. I'm plugging an Ethernet cable to the WIS 850IO module, the other side of this Ethernet cable is connected to a switch which is connected to the router in my local area network. I connected the Raspberry Pi Pico to my computer using a USB to micro USB cable. This way my computer powers on the Raspberry Pi Pico which provides 3.3 volts to the WIS 850 IO module to make it work. Just to make sure in this video I'm again uploading the Arduino sketch and after that you can observe the output in the serial monitor. As you can see the Arduino sketch that runs on the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico connects to uh, my local area network and through it to the internet to download the example.com website or otherwise the HTML5 content of this website. In the Arduino sketch I have defined an array of characters called server and the default value is example.com. If you're interested in downloading the content from another website you have to go into the Arduino sketch, change the content of the server variable to something else, recompile it, upload it again to the Raspberry Pi Pico and run it. In this example the Raspberry Pi Pico gets an IP from my router over DHCP, however it is also possible to set a static IP and by default there is a static IP set in the Arduino sketch. If you need to use a static IP with different values, uh, again modify the sketch and upload it again to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Thank you very much for watching this video. Now you know it is possible to connect Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico 2 to the internet and to your local network with a cable. Uh, of course you can do the same with any other development board built around the same microcontrollers. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico comes with RP2040 and Raspberry Pi Pico 2 comes with the brand new RP2350. 
Um, the source code is available in GitHub. Check the description of the video for a link. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.